Hello, everyone, and welcome to Locked on Flames. We have officially made it to All-Star Weekend, and you know it's Friday, so we are going to be talking about all the winners and losers of the week, and of course, our mid-season winners and losers. So let's jump right into it. Your Locked On Flames, your daily podcast on the Calgary Flames, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Well, hello, everyone. Happy Friday. I'm your host, Jess Belmosto of the Metropolitan Riveters Public Relations Team, as well as a blogger for different corners of the internet and uh, covering the NHL now for quite a few years. I hope you're having a fantastic day today. Thanks for making Locked on Flames your first listen of the day. You can find us anywhere you get your podcasts. We're also free 99 on YouTube. It's always free. Never going to charge you a dime. And today's flame of the day is Ocean Driftwood because it is a nasty blizzard out there and could use a little slice of paradise in my life. This season has been an absolute mess since the off season. Like we knew going into this season with, you know, Tony D'Angelo being re-signed, all the Evander, Evander Kane drama that just seemed to be boiling over the Chicago Blackhawks just I feel like that's just like the tip of the iceberg and we just we have to keep it going. We're going to we're going to talk about some things that stand out to me uh as the losers of the season. And obviously I can't cover everything because that would be a whole week of the show. And I don't want to fill your life with that much negativity. So let's start in Toronto. Toronto dropped their dress code for the season. They had decided to loosen it up. And were, they the players were going to be able to show up in what they wanted. Relaxed. And, you know, something a little bit more stylish <laughs> outside of their suits and ties. Now, obviously, you can make a uh, suit and ties flashy and express yourself through them but I think especially with Austin Matthews and Justin Bieber's friendship like they were really really um looking forward to kind of showcasing I believe it was Bieber's new brand that he uh designed merch for the Leafs and things like that and uh then we never heard about it again so (laughs) you know apparently Someone took it too far. We don't know what happened. We just know that it just takes one bad apple to ruin the bunch. And it's just like when you're in school and the teacher says the next person to talk will, uh, you know, the recess is lost. You know, you lose your recess if you can't act right. And then the one kid in the back talks and now you're all stuck inside um, at your desks. And of course on, uh, you know, the teacher's crap list. (laughs) Um, You know, I I really do like the idea of players being able to express and market themselves because there is quite honestly nothing worse than having to go to work in the same, like, attire. Like, for me, it's jeans and a white shirt. So if you ever see me in a white shirt, chances are I am just coming from work or heading to work. (laughs) But, you know, I think... You know, it's just unfortunate that that happened. And then, you know, these kind of get progressively worse (laughs) as as I go on. Uh, It wasn't intentional by any means, but uh, Brendan Lemieux, okay? I almost forgot about this, but then I Googled um, Brady Kachuk being the captain and then that like jogged my memory. (sighs) But like, For no reason, this grown man (laughs) went out of his way to bite Brady Kachuk's finger. And it wasn't like, you know, Brady's hand was even like close to his mouth. He like stuck his neck out to bite it, which I think is just hysterical. Like, you can't control your emotions like that. Like, come on. Are you sure? You sure you're not, you know, you've changed, you've grown? I don't know, but I just, I think back to when it happened and Brady Kajak's just reaction. He was like, did you just bite me? 
and because it just reminded me of like daycare or when you're in school and like this kid is just like you know that kid and just chomps down on you and you're like did this just actually happen but no instead it was like a 30 year old NHL player biting like a 22 year old it's fine um and then of course now we're gonna like shift the mood a little bit but every scandal that has come okay every headline that has come out of Arizona the missed tax deadline <laughs> them like potentially getting locked out for a whole different reason the next to empty arena and then potentially having to play in a college arena that holds like 5,000 people is just that is probably one of the biggest L's and just like the most consecutive L's because how on earth do you let that happen? And I think back to Katie Strang's investigation that she did two, probably might even be three years ago at this point, where she was interviewing people who worked in Arizona's front office and, you know, the more behind the scenes operations and talked to them about how life was in there and how dysfunctional it was and the reports were refuted of course by uh you know the higher ups and things like that but everything that has happened just takes me back to that piece and all of her investigative work because if things aren't that bad there why is it presenting itself in a different manner? Why is, you know, who forgets to file, like, the tax? Like, whatever it was, like, the city taxes or whatever. It was, like, a million bucks. You know, that's usually what half of what a, uh, an arena makes on a hometown, uh, or at a home game, rather. Like, you're telling me someone just couldn't be, like, card information do they have like <laughs> do they have like spending limits for rich people I don't know anyways that's besides the point but you know what I'm saying like no one wrote a check like no one like starred it in the calendar and said hey taxes are due can you like f file this off it, no one did it I, that's an important part of <laughs> business but uh this next one is Kind of a little bit heavier and just kind of like a trigger warning to anyone who doesn't really want to talk or listen to um, the Chicago Blackhawks. Um, the players involved in the 2010 cover-up. And I'm talking about the ones who were vocal. Um, Duncan Keith, how he refused to speak to the investigators and to the law firm. Jonathan Taves and how horrible his statements were and just how little regard he had for Kyle Beach and I don't just like thinking about that as like a captain saying that is so bad like it's so bad Patrick Kane and just kind of his like wishy-washy answers and not being great and I'm sure that there were plenty of others that and just chose not to speak about it. And um, they just didn't do their own piece. They, you know, and this was so much bigger than just hockey and so much bigger than one organization. We're talking about lives. Uh, you know, we've seen, obviously, John Doe 1, who ended up being Kyle Beach, John Doe 2. And now apparently there's um, a hockey player at the University of Miami who is weighing in on the lawsuit and you know lives are forever changed because of that and really don't want to be too heavy but it's just you know you didn't and I get it you have a right to not cooperate but you're kind of a, a jerk for doing that so coming up next we are going to talk about uh, the winners <laughs> across the league because Lord knows that we have to shed some light on the good things here at Lockdown Flames. And of course, uh, there has been plenty of positive, positive um, 
things happening. But first, let's talk about Built Bar. Built Bar is a delicious tasting protein bar that will get you through your days. And they have a fantastic uh, nutrition value that uh, really benefits anyone who is looking to lose weight, maintain weight, or just satisfy a craving. I think my favorite thing about them is that uh, you, know, you can kind of eat them like guilt-free. I hate villainizing food, but um, it's just not you know, it, it's it covered in chocolate, but it's healthy for you. Low in calories, low in carbs, high in fiber, high in protein. Like you're getting the good stuff when you eat this. So Built Bar is offering you a 15% discount when you head on over to built.com and use promo code LOCKED15 for 15% off of your order. And you can check out the variety packs or if you already have a favorite, uh, you could just reorder it or, uh, you know, kind of spin the wheel and see if you want to try a new one. Get a little creative with it. So that's built.com with promo code LOCKED15. Thanks for following me on Twitter, where we keep this discussion going all the time. If you're watching on YouTube, you can see my Twitter handle right on the screen. And for those of you not watching, um, what are you doing? And make sure to follow me on Twitter at JessBelmosto. So some of my favorite moments have been ones that have just been so authentic and raw and kind of come naturally. And <laughs> this first one, it, I remember when it happened and just laughing a lot because it just, I just, you know, you think that it would happen, that this wouldn't happen, that it'd be easy to solve. But it turns out that NHL players are just like us and have no idea where to watch hockey games this year. Claude Giroux's wife, Rayanne, tweeted out a picture of her and Claude on FaceTime <laughs> because he was quarantining in a, in a hotel in, I believe it was San Jose or Anaheim, and he wanted to watch the game, but the game was blacked out and... <laughs> <laughs> she tweeted a picture of them on FaceTime together and was like, hey, does anybody know how he can watch the game? Uh, the game's blocked out on like the local sports center or the Bali station and uh, it's not on ESPN Plus. So can we have some help? And everybody was just like, oh yeah, this is true. ESPN will really help grow the game, huh? Like that deal will really help it. But um, I just thought that was really funny and just kind of like, one of those random moments where you're doom scrolling and you're like, okay, I can get a chuckle out of this. Uh, my winner, another winner is uh, Rick Westhead for asking all of the hard questions. And I think that he did a lot and continues to do a lot in terms of investigative journalism, investigating the league and taking a look at how things are ran and how things run, and just how, like, dysfunctional isn't even the right word, how corrupt, honestly, corrupt some of these teams are, and probably most of these teams. And for players or victims to allow him uh, to tell their story is... It's a heavy responsibility, you know. Um, I think being tasked with any interview and doing a profile is, you know, obviously you want to portray the people in the right light. But when you're doing investigative work on such a heavy topic around, you know, such a amazing, I use that term lightly because it wasn't amazing for, for Kyle Beach or the victims, but such an amazing time in the Chicago Blackhawks organization. And, um, you know, like, you have to sh shed light on just how bad things are. And Rick Westhead um, has honestly probably earned a way of blackballing himself because, you know, his questions have gone unanswered in Zoom media availabilities with the league and with Gary Batman. So, you know, it, it takes a lot. And sometimes it's it's bigger than just, oh, here's, um, I want to be credentialed or I want access to this and that. It's, you know, there's a larger task at hand here. And I truly don't think that we would have gotten 
anywhere without Rick's persistent investigating and reporting and due diligence. On a much lighter note now, uh, something that's much happier to talk about is Eric Carlson and his wife Melinda welcomed a baby boy just, I believe it was last weekend. And it was, uh, if you've followed the Carlsons, you know that they unfortunately suffered a miscarriage. Oh God, what was that, 2017, 2018? Um, and it, they lost their baby boy, Axel. And, you know, sometimes like back, closer back then, I would go back and watch the gender reveal because just to see Carlson look like so happy that he was having a boy and they were having a boy and they were, you know, their first child's going to be a boy and how excited they were. They were blessed with a rainbow baby um, over a year ago. And, um, you know, the caption mentioned how excited he was to finally have a son and how this has been a long time coming. And this is such an exciting time for them. And, my heart just goes out to anyone who struggles with that, um, you know, unfortunately, infertility. Like, this is a hockey podcast, obviously, but I'm just going to take a second to talk about infertility. It's a very serious issue, and it's uh, there's a stigma around it, and we're going to work on breaking that stigma. And to wrap up this segment, we are going to talk about everyone's favorite oversized toddler, and that would be Brady Kachuk being named Captain. Uh, you know, I think it was obviously an easy choice. He was just a natural born leader. He is someone who, you know, is fun to watch. He's very talented and he is the future of Ottawa. And he inked that long term deal and kind of, you know, let it be known that he, he was going to be there and sticking around through the ups and downs. And, uh, Another thing that I really am happy for is the fact that Matthew and Brady are stretching at uh, center ice again, which is always nice to see, especially after last season where Daryl Sutter put the kibosh on that. But, you know, there's plenty of exciting things that have happened, and it is important to shed light on that. And uh, let me shed light on something else for you. Bet Online has you covered this season with more props, odds, and lines than ever before as football continues to march through the playoffs as you know the big game is just next weekend. So betonline.net remains the best spot for all of your sports scores, podcasts, and news this season. And it's not just football. Bet Online has up to has up to the minute info on pro and college hoops, NHL boxing, UFC, along with live real-time updates of current games. Don't wait to take advantage of all the amazing offers for available for the 2022 season. Bet online where the game starts. Make sure that you are subscribed to Locked on Flames wherever you get your podcasts. And if you ever want to watch on YouTube, you can just search Locked on Flames. And uh, subscribe and turn on the notification bell to all, all, and not personalized. I have been thinking about what to say for winners and losers of the week. Mainly losers um, since, you know, Wednesday. I, I really start to rack my brain and think about, you know, who who has just been an absolute disgrace. And then this happened. And... There was an outburst that happened at um, an event hosted by the Chicago Blackhawks. Uh, I believe it was their front office or, you know, uh, it was the owner and other people. Uh, I <laughs> And I've been thinking about what to say. And because this was the perfect opportunity for the Blackhawks to work on proving that they are changing the culture within the sport and within their organization and talk about the things that they have implemented. But when uh, a beat writer asked Rocky Wirtz, um, you know, what have you guys done to uh, change that? And uh, 
how are you, you know, continuing to support players and make sure nothing like that ever happens again? And this man had the audacity to, like, stop answering. He said, he, I'm sure you've seen the audio by now, but he was cut off and told, we're moving on. We're not discussing this. We're live. That's the past. We're not living in the past. And just snapped. And then somebody else spoke up. I was like, oh, I'll answer this. And then he was like, no, no one's answering this. We're moving on. And uh, that's not great. And as somebody who does public relations, um, I would be throwing up if one of my clients did that. I would be so sick to my stomach because that is just so wrong. Anybody with common sense knows that that's not how you answer a question. Um, if it's a difficult question and you don't want to talk about it, you say, you know, We've worked on changing uh, certain protocols and different procedures. And, you know, that's all I can uh, offer you right now. But if you had made real change, you would happily provide that information. So, um, you know, you can look like you're actually protecting your players and not the abusers. And you can say things like, you know, we've implemented this anonymous reporting system. Um, we send out a weekly digest every week with a rundown of what's going on. With that link attached to the anonymous reporting portal, there's plenty of support staff available for our players and not only for the players, but for our staff as well. Um, you know, everyone's covered. Um, you know, work something in about the kids that work concession because that, that's their part-time job, I'm sure. And, you know, make them feel included. Like, there were just so many better ways to answer that question. And it made me so upset. Right? As, as everyone was. So, there's just... You can't just move on from something of that magnitude. Sure, it's been 12 years for you. But there are, there are multiple victims in this situation that don't get to just move on. And then the reason why he didn't want to answer this question was made abundantly clear because the next morning, that third student from the University of Miami came forward and was weighing in and potentially named the third victim in all of this. So, you know, it, it's... Even if a lawyer told him not to answer that. He could have said, you know, uh, there are certain things we're working on. Um, you know, I, I'd really not, I'd love to find another time to chat where we can go into detail, uh, things like that, like PR 101. And that is why, um, <laughs> that is why they are, uh, hiring for a PR manager and, oh, it's bad. It's bad. It's bad. And the winner of the week is I'm going to butcher her name, and I'm so sorry. Gio Cho of China's women's hockey team. Her goalie pads, I'm going to put them on the screen here so you all can see. Her goalie pads are some of the sickest I've ever seen, and the dragons on them are actually, like, hand-sewn in. So it's not just, like, like a sticker, not a sticker, but like a vinyl. It is hand stitched in there. So that's incredible. I love it. And I think it's fun. It's something different. It's exciting. It gets people talking. And if you want people to have eyes on your product, if you want to have eyes on your product, that's how you do it. You make it fun. And, uh, you know, I think that she, <laughs> she looks fantastic. And uh, she... I haven't looked at the updates from today's scores, but I know that they beat Denmark three to one uh, the first day. So love to see it. Uh, and I figured we'd end on a positive note because this week has been hard for many people. Uh, you know, just rolling through the motions and uh, always grateful to have you here at Locked on Flames. So thank you so much for tuning in and making us a part of your week. And having, you know, just the time to listen to me. I appreciate you. And there's some big announcements coming next week. So thank you all. And make sure to follow me on Twitter. I'll flash it on the screen again. At Just Bell Mosto. And uh, yeah, I will see you all next week with some exciting news. Bye.